Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing very well. Today we're working through our viewer requested questions. This one is in progress. It is from Scott on the YouTube. Test whether it's better to fire a missile from subsonic or supersonic and how much difference it makes. Firing a missile while subsonic requires a lot of energy from the missile to push through the transonic region. So that's kind of Mach 0.9 to 0 to 1, depending how you want to measure that which has a lot of drag involved. Whereas firing the missile while already supersonic means that you're not using as much energy to accelerate the missile. My suggestion to test this would be to distance player one and player two X miles apart and fire a missile. Pause the sim a fraction of a second from when the missile impacts and note down what the kinetic energy state of the missile is, such as speed. Do this test while both players are at the same subsonic speed and again at the same supersonic speed and altitude. Fine. So what we want to do is, is in this, I, want to, I don't quite like his method. Um, what I'm going to do is have me firing against an AI. or I'll do three tests while firing the missile at an airspeed of Mach 0.95, Mach 1 and Mach 1.05 just to make sure we are through the bounce sound barrier and there are no inaccuracies. I will do the same shot each time with everything constant apart from this here. It's the only difference we're going to have. Rather than when the missile hits him I'm and taking the kinetic energy, I think it's actually more useful. I've started using mechanical energy instead of kinetic energy. Mechanical energy is just kinetic energy plus potential energy. So kinetic is half mv squared and uh, what's potential is mgh, I think. Um, because anything that's flying, it, it, potential is useful, relevant, just as much as kinetic. I keep getting told off for using mechanical instead of kinetic, but I think we should be using mechanical. I think it's more important in certain cases. So I'm going to be looking at mechanical energy today, uh, assuming that the missiles take the same flight path. I'm assuming they're going to get to the same altitude. We may change that depending how it goes. Uh, so we're going to take peak mechanical energy of the missile. The problem is I'm not trial sure what Scott is really trying to prove here, because obviously if you fire your missile at these different uh, speeds, that's going to have slightly more mechanical energy than that. You just know it is. That's going to have slightly more mechanical energy than that. We just know it is, right? It's just simple. So I'm not quite sure uh, what he's trying to prove, unless he's trying to prove that the mechanical energy slash kinetic energy is not proportional to the speed set here, and that there are, is extra efficiency that will ensure that we don't have a proportionality because of what he said, the effect of firing the missile above the transonic region. So what I'm trying to say is that this would be a real low figure, let's say three, I'm going to um, just exaggerate, and this would have a high figure of eight, and that would have a high figure of nine. That there would prove unequivocally that his theory is correct. If that was seven, that was eight, and that was nine, in terms of the energies that we're going to measure, that would prove that his theory just doesn't work. It just doesn't make sense. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. That's the theory behind it. Uh, I'll go and set the experiment up now and we'll see how we go. We're now on our aircraft. We're going to do our three tests. We're going to keep the Cherubs exactly 1500 to keep that constant. We're going to keep the speed as per the experiment. We've got Mac there. And we're going to keep the range constant of 20 or as near close as we can get to 20. And that's pretty much it. Make sure we aim at the target. Three, two, one, go. So I'm going to press and hold weapon release at 20 seconds and the delay will be constant. And press. Let that baby go. Okay, Mach 1. And fire. And fire! Can't wait to analyze some data sets, RC. Analyze some data sets. The viewers are all on the edge of their seat. They are, I bet they are. They're like, data. oh, cap, the data set. I'm like pumping away, waiting for this data set. I mean, what? <laughs> they don't want to watch bombs. And they don't want to watch fucking flying. bombs. They don't want to watch me math. crashing into buildings and math. They want to watch math <laughs> and data sets. They just let's rule the world, I see. Face it, face it, face it. And they're sexy too. Or Cap will make them sexy if they're not. Okay, we've done those three. Now let's go and analyze the mechanical energy attained in each. So this is Mach 0.95, or as near as damn it. There we go, 0.95. And where's my missile? Piao, right. Okay, we've got our peak mechanical energy there in presumably joules. The best I can get, 48,221 joules of energy. And the Mach 1. Let's get that on the, on the go. We've got a peak here of 49326 joules of energy. 49326. And finally, Mach 0.05. 5374 joules of energy. Let's go and look at the data. Okay, the data here. Sorry for the bad presentation, but we're on a hurry as ever. Nor Mach 0.95, Mach 1, Mach 1.05. Here is the mechanical energy 
uh, peak achieved by each that 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 in terms of joules and if we plot that with the mac here and the joules there what we get is a straight line a straight line means it's directly proportional that there is directly proportional to that which means that this theory is not true or not modeled in dcs i don't know which there is no extra associated energy being used to push through the transonic region of Mach 0.95 to Mach 1. The same amount of energy is used more or less to push from Mach 1 above the sound barrier to Mach 1.05 and onwards. Uh, that's pretty much all I've got to say on that. Anything you want to add, RC? Nope. Hope that was useful and see you later.